this is me and my 3D printed selfie. People like to take selfies with uh, my Star Trek selfie. So uh, one of the staff here is actually going to pass it out um, for you guys to um, check out. To 3D print something, you need a 3D digital model of the object you want to print. 3D design software to make edits, a printer, and printer material. Having a 3D printer is like having a 3D photocopier. And there are many names for 3D printing. If you hear terms like digital fabrication, additive manufacturing, or rapid prototyping, these all mean the same thing, except 3D printers or Star Trek replicators sounds way cooler. I'm a medical maker. I use 3D printers to impact over a billion lives. One in seven people have a disability. Many of them need, but can't get, custom assistive devices that allow them to participate fully in everyday life. I lead a team of innovators, and we 3D print custom assistive devices. Assistive devices can be very simple, like this uh, 3D printed cup holder that attaches to a wheelchair. Or they can be very sophisticated and complex, like this 3D printed prosthetic hand, which we're going to pass out for you to see and touch. If you have a disability, it can be a real challenge to have a custom assistive device replaced. And that's because there is a huge shortage of skilled workers who can make custom assistive devices. So if your assistive device breaks or gets lost, you have to book an appointment. You may have to travel a long distance. And you will have to pay somebody to replace that assistive device for you. But with 3D printing, maybe we can change that. Now, we can make a 3D digital model of your assistive device, give you that file, and you can 3D print it whenever you need a new one. Here's an example. I met a uh, patient who needs to wear custom splints on her hand for the rest of her life. The problem is, is that these splints get broken or they get lost. And she has a few options. One is that she buys off-the-shelf plastic splints. These can break. They're not cheap. And they're not custom fitted to her. So they don't work as well. Or she can see a, a specialist who will take measurements and create custom metal splints for her. And these are very expensive. They're less likely to break than plastic splints, but she could still lose them. Or the third option is that she can actually book an appointment to see a trained hand therapist who makes splints, and she will have to pay that therapist for their labor time as well as the material cost. So what my team and I were able to do is we made 3D models of her splints, which are custom fitted to her. And now she has a file, and she can just go to her public library and 3D print a new splint every time she needs one. And 3D printing a splint at a library is about 70 times cheaper than a custom metal splint, and about 10 times cheaper than an off-the-shelf uh, plastic splint. So this patient's story tells you how 3D printing compared to the traditional um, handmade method of making assistive devices is much more convenient, much cheaper for patients, and potentially life-changing for people with disabilities. Here's another example. I met a local musician who, through an accident, is now missing three fingers of his playing hand. He would really like to be able to play the guitar again. So his therapist made a handle so he can hold his guitar pick with his two remaining fingers. And as you can see here, this handle can get dirty, may need to be replaced, it can get lost. So I used free software that turned my cell phone into a 3D scanner, and I scanned this handle. 
I used free 3D design software to make some edits and convert that file into a printable file. And then I printed it. And this was in one weekend. And now we have a printed guitar pick handle for this patient. And what's very exciting is now he can take this file. And anytime he needs a new pick handle, he can just go to his local 3D print shop and get another one made. So what's even more exciting about how we can use 3D printing, not just for patients here in our communities, but all over the world, is that cell phones are 3D scanners. And that 3D software programs that allow you to make edits to 3D models are free. And because so many people on this planet have a cell phone, that means almost everybody has access to a 3D scanner. And as long as you have access to the internet, you can use free 3D design software programs. And 3D printers are becoming increasingly affordable and accessible. They're now in our public libraries, our schools, our maker spaces, and even in uh, print shops. But to me, what's also fun about 3D printing is it's not just useful for helping uh, lives here on Earth, but uh, we have a 3D printer in space. And so this is uh, the first Star Trek replicator. It's, uh, it was launched to the International Space Station last fall. And I now have a print slot reserved to 3D print uh, medical supplies on board the space station. And this is my mission badge, which we're going to pass out here so you guys can look at it. So the question I have is, what would you make on a 3D printer? And so I brought my 3D printer with me to the Mars Desert Research Station. And I used solar energy to power my 3D printer to make medical supplies. And it turns out that stethoscopes have been lost in space. So we may have to 3D print a replacement. You can actually download the original paper authored by the French physician who invented the stethoscope. And in that paper are drawings um, that he used to build his stethoscope. And so I was able to take those drawings and draw them digitally on free 3D design software, and then print it. The fun part about 3D printing is that you can pick uh, whatever colors you like. So I decided to go with neon green. And as I was getting ready to test the stethoscope, I came across this. A 15-year-old high school student has come up with a 3D printable case that turned your smartphone into a stethoscope. And he also uses a mobile app that records and visualizes your heart sounds for remote diagnosis. And this, to me, is what's so exciting about 3D printing, is that now anybody can be an innovator. If you have an idea, you can draw it digitally with free software. And you can make it physically real by clicking print. So 3D printers are not just 3D photocopiers, but they're ideas factories. There is a national contest for American high school students. And they are asking students, what would you make on a Star Trek replicator? And so my challenge to all of you here today is, what would you make on a 3D printer that could impact over a billion lives? Thank you.